Hi, my name is Jim and I was retired. Who is a better judge of future inflation? Consumers, professional forecasters, or the markets? Right now, inflation expectations are all over the place. In this video, we will discuss where is inflation heading? I'm back after a week on Fire Island, so there was no video last week. Unlike last year, I put the phone down and enjoyed the vacation. You can see the short videos I posted last year above. But last week, I just let it all happen. That means, of course, that I didn't get to comment on that CPI number and the fall from 9.1 to 8.5%. The CPI, the Consumer Price Index, fell from 9.1 to 8.5. In fact, the July number was 0% compared to the June number. So inflation is over. I mean, the administration even passed an Inflation Reduction Act. It's already working. Well, I think it's far too early to declare victory on the war on inflation, let alone guess where the FOMC is going to head in September. But people are already doing it. So before the FOMC meets September 20th and 21st, we're going to see a lot more data. So it's too soon to start reacting to the CPI decline. We're going to see on Thursday, August 25th, a new number for the gross domestic product. That'll be the second estimate of the second quarter to find out if we really had two declines in a row. The next day, we're going to get the July reading for the con personal consumption expenditures, or PCE, which is the Fed's preferred measure of inflation. We may see a modest decline in that number. Remember, it was 6.8%. And we may see it go down a little bit, just like the CPI did. And then we're going to get another jobs number on September 2nd to see the state of the labor market. And then we'll get one more reading of the consumer price index, the CPI headline number, September 13, one week before the FOMC meeting. So we're going to see a lot more data to decide whether we're going to get a 50 basis points or 75 basis point increase in the September meeting. Now, I've covered the difference between the CPI headline inflation number and the PCE inflation number that the Fed uses in past videos. But generally, as you can see in this chart, the PCE runs a little lower than the CPI but not as much as it has in the last few months. There's really been a big diversion between CPI and PCE. One wonders if the inflation measures, either P PCE or CPI, is missing something in this post-pandemic economy. So where is inflation heading? Which measures are correct? And how soon will it be lower? We, we'd like to, to know that it's going to come down pretty soon, but I'm not so sure. So as the release of the July FOMC minutes showed this week, the FOMC is paying close attention to inflation expectations, which is why I'm here near this anchor. How well are inflation expectations anchored? That's going to be an important ingredient in what they do in September. Now, from the minutes themselves, it noted that participants noted that expectations of inflation were an important influence in the behavior of actual inflation and stressed that moving to an appropriately restrictive stance of policy is essential to avoid the unanchoring of inflation expectations. So for those that think they're going to pause in September or maybe slow down to a quarter point, that's like off the table. The real bet is between 50 or 75 basis points in September. 
and I've outlined my reasons why I believe they should stay on that 75 basis point path to get the Fed funds rate above PCE inflation. But we'll see. So they're going to pay attention to inflation expectations. But what does that mean? How do you measure expectations? And generally, there are three ways to measure expectations. The first is to use a survey-based measure of consumers by asking what do you think the inflation is going to be in the future. And the University of Michigan is best known for its consumer inflation expectations survey. It asks the consumers what to expect inflation will be a year ahead and five years ahead. I'm concentrating on its one-year line here. The New York Fed also does a consumer survey, and I'm showing the one-year return from that survey, too. Prior to 2021, these two measures of consumer expectations were rather close. But in the past year, again, maybe a measurement issue, the New York Fed survey seems to be running a little closer to PCE inflation than the Michigan survey. It's about a point above. Other surveys ask professional forecasters, economists, what they think inflation will be in the year ahead and longer term. And one of the oldest of those surveys is the Philadelphia Fed's survey of professional forecasters. Now the survey of professional forecasters is a quarterly survey that asks professional forecasters to guess at CPI and PC inflation for the next four quarters as well as their guess for a longer run average of five years and ten years ahead. Now to compare that to the consumers I'm going to use the one year ahead quarter and because it's quarterly instead of monthly I'm going to repeat that number for the quarter. That's the only way I could figure out how to graph a quarterly result on this keynote chart along with all the monthly data. If you know of a better way, let me know. As you can see, the professional forecasters are much lower than consumers. In fact, if you track these numbers from the professional forecasters to the FOMC's summary of economic projections done by the Fed policymakers themselves, they track pretty well. I guess the FOMC policymakers are professional forecasters too, right? Bond investors have another way of measuring inflation expectation by looking at the differences between the nominal and inflation adjusted treasuries. And now I've looked at the St. Louis Fed's database, FRED, to look up the 10 year and five year break even points using this data. And the break-even point is supposed to be a reading of where inflation is likely heading. So the current levels suggest that investors in the bond market think that inflation will fall to about 2.6% on average over the next five years and 24 over the next 10 years. Is the market right? Who knows? I think the market may be betting on a return to lower inflation sooner than many consumers and professional forecasters predict. I think it's important that we get inflation under control to keep expectations anchored. And the only way we're going to do that, as I've mentioned in past videos, is to get the Fed funds rate above the current reading of PCE inflation. And right now, if in, uh, PCE inflation is in the sixes and we're only in the twos, we have a long way to go. I'll conclude with my standard warning. I am not a financial planner. I'm not an economist. I have no initials after my name. So just take these as entertaining ideas from one educated consumer to another. Always do your own due diligence and seek out a professional if you need one. See you next week.